Hello, people of the internet. My name is JD Shadow, and we once more have to focus on the Activision Blizzard situation. And I use the term situation lightly because I'm not sure what to call it in a way that it's not going to get myself demonetized on YouTube because apparently we're not allowed to talk about these types of things without getting demonetized, but other people are allowed to talk about things and they're not getting even the bat of an eye on YouTube. So take that for what you will. But we need to talk about how people are covering this. Now, Kotaku has uncovered, quote-unquote uncovered, because I'm not sure if it's them who uncovered it or somebody who they are trying to see P from, issues concerning a suite that shares a name with Bill Cosby. Take that for what you will. And then they're trying to explain that off. And a lot of other things have come about. This keeps growing and growing and growing and growing to the point that Bobby Kotick trying to say whatever he needs to say in order to get out of this situation and some people are now saying that this might end in a settlement because they might not want this to go any further than it has to now keep in mind that everybody has the right to do process and a fair trial so let's hope that happens but it doesn't seem to be looking all that great for Activision Blizzard. However some people in the video game journalistic sphere might need to answer for some things that have to do with this. I talked before about Jim Sterling and how yes he has quote-unquote fought for things however when it comes to one Zoe Quinn all of a sudden he wants to protect her which she has has been just as corrupt, just as abusive as some of the people he calls out. Yet he doesn't want to do that because he has a role in her game in which is vaporware at this point. We don't know where it is. And it's not like she's really showing that she has any problem in getting developmental time in or anything like that. It seems like she's using the funds that are supposed to be used for that project toward leisurely activities. Like she doesn't really care about making the game. Not that she's having any trouble or stress or anything like that. However, one other person that is getting put on blast is Jason Schreider. You may remember him. He's the guy who I believe he's the same guy who tried to say that April Fool's jokes were not appropriate at certain times and everybody got on him for that and then of course even though he has uncovered a few things in his career he seems to be on a one track mind about certain aspects and it seems like he has a huge ego and he had left Kotaku for Bloomberg I believe it was either this this year or last year maybe which he left for Bloomberg or maybe even sometime before that and I'm pretty sure someone will shed some light on what the exact time frame was in all of those instances as I don't have the complete story in front of me here because I want to get to this particular set of circumstances with Activision Blizzard so I want to focus more on that and more on what exactly he's saying now because I believe it's really really important that we get to the bottom of why he's saying all this because he has claimed that he had been actively investigating the Activision Blizzard stuff for quote-unquote years and in doing so is going to his usual weapons chest his usual weapons set of defenses when he's getting called out one he brings up a seven-year-old controversy which shares his name with an ant a Australian ant I think and he goes on a blocking spree on Twitter and I've said this countless times that there are people on Twitter who will abuse what should be used in order to drown out trolls and control the hateful messages as a way to silence critique against what you do. And it's becoming really apparent that Jason Schreier is really abusing that aspect and Twitter doesn't do anything about it and just gives them more tools in order to further silence any critique and keep yourself in this little bubble without having the answer to anything that you are ever doing. And it's really becoming apparent that maybe there's something more here that we have to investigate because maybe he knows more than what he's letting on he's protecting some people that perhaps is worth getting into. Let's get to the tweets that has set off a bit of a firestorm or yeah it has set off a firestorm before he said these tweets because it seems as though 
He was sitting on this story. He was sitting on this Activision Blizzard story for some time before the California state decided they were going to take some action here with a two year long investigation into what was all going on to which Activision Blizzard is really not handling this well at all and is just showing their hand and showing how much guilt they have. But here is Jason Strider and I am going to not say the name of the controversy that we are talking about here. But it's the go-to usually when someone is trying to silence critique on their video game journalistic ethics. They bring this up. They always do. It's their weapon. It's the way to silence people and to get people who felt threatened on their side. Not really understanding why they're even invoking that name. We should not be fooled at all. It's their silencing tactic. Only those people who see it as a silencing tactic or even uttering the name anymore. Please do not be fooled if you're one of those people who felt threatened or anything like that by some people who were trolls during that time, please be aware that these people are not on your side. They are not. Anyway, he goes on to say thousands of whatever cretins are spreading a rumor that I was hiding or sitting on the story about Blizzard. Normally, I wouldn't address their nonsense, but I'm getting flooded with messages. So here's the truth. I've been actively investigating this for years, three months ago. And then he shows a email from his Gmail account in which he's asking the DFEH never got back to him and he's blacking out the name of a couple people maybe who he's talking to and then somebody at the DFEH who was investigating these claims and you can see that on your screen right now and then he goes on to say I've heard rumors and antidotes but could never corroborate enough for an article for various reasons that happens often sometimes it takes something monumental for the truth to come out and I'm blown away by the courage of those who have shared their stories. No, he is not blown away. Quite frankly, because he has reported on things without having that much evidence before. Without having so much as a accusation from one person before. He has done this before, so we should not be fooled by this. But when some people call him out on it, and you're going to see this on your screen right now, there are several people who are both defending him and calling him out on these things as well. Not only about maybe he's not exactly telling everybody the whole truth still and they don't believe what he's saying which we should not but he decides he's going to evoke this name again first things first let's not be fooled here the only reason he's uttering the name of something that shares his name with the female australian aunt is because of the silencing tactic he does not want anybody to criticize him so they're going to this tactic they're going to this avenue in order to keep some people from being believe. It's like a McCarthy smear. It's like being told you are a Russian asset in politics. This is how they do it. This is what they're trying to do. They're trying to keep people silenced from being able to criticize video game journalism or people who have their hands dirty in some ways. And this is what Jason Schreier is being accused of, that he was protecting Activision Blizzard because he had an inside track. And because Activision Blizzard, as we have reported before, has been able able to blacklist people if they got anywhere close to finding out the truth here. Sure, they didn't want Leona Kirstner to report on this, but Jason Schreider, that's fine because we know he's been bought and paid for by Activision Blizzard. That's what this is. But if you're seeing the other thing that's been going on, and I have said this before in this video, that he has gone into the Twitter blocking spree. Like, anybody who dares to call him out is getting themselves blocked, even if they're saying something completely civil about it they're finding them being blocked and slash or they're seeing that their replies are getting deleted by Jason Schreier. Yes, Twitter's giving them that ability too. Why are they? This is complete and utter abuse of that power. This is complete and utter abuse of people to be able to hide things that might be critical of them or might expose them as to what exactly is going on. And Jason Schreier has a lot to answer for here. He has a lot to say. He needs to come clean. Now, if he was worried that perhaps if he said something to the effect before the DFEH released what they found, that the investigation would go awry, then maybe he should just say that. But he's not saying that. There is no mention that he was worried that the investigation would hit some speed bumps if he were to come forward with this information beforehand. And usually, responsible journalists will do that. If they're saying, hey, I have information about something, but I can't reveal it just yet because there's an act 
active investigation going on, then they will just say, you know what, because there's an active investigation, we can't really comment right now. They can't comment. However, we know there is an investigation going on. But again, there's no mention of this. There's no hint of this anywhere that he was quote unquote sitting on it for this reason. And with the way that we now know that Activision Blizzard was actively blacklisting people if they got close to the story, but Jason Schreider was the only one who was allowed in, that's really suspicious that they're choosing which people they want to be allowed to access this sort of information. And this is really suspicious because Jason Schreider has been known to have inside tracks into things like game releases, game, things like rumors about new games coming out, stuff like that, or games getting developed, or things of that nature. Why does he have the only inside track here? Why are they only talking to him and then if somebody who has no obligation to them decides they're going to investigate that, they automatically get blacklisted if they so much as talk to somebody. That seems to be really suspect and that it goes at the heart of this. Jason Schreider is protecting people. He was protecting something for so many years and then when it wasn't able to be ignored anymore, not only did he come out of nowhere and say, hey, I had all this inside track. I was just waiting for things to drop in all of this, which, okay, he probably was just sitting on it at this point, but I'm going to blame everybody who's calling me out saying that I was sitting on this, which you were, and I'm going to call all of them something that happened seven years ago that only I and a few others are even mentioning the name of now. While not mentioning the many people who were probably video game journalists who decided to really do their job on this story and Activision Blizzard decided, hey, we're not going to allow you to have any inside access, but we'll let this guy in who we've already bought and paid for, who the second that we can try to manipulate the story into how we want him to cover this because he has been bought and paid for, all of a sudden now he can go and report that story in the way that shows that we're not exactly the type of people that the California DFEH has actively said we were. And still, there are people defending Jason Schreider here. And again, if reporting on this would jeopardize the investigation in any sort of way, then maybe we should have been told that right off the bat, or maybe Jason should have just said that. But no, he didn't want to do that. He doesn't want to say that. But let me first say this. The people that have been talking about this, about these issues with video game journalism, stretches far beyond past 24 2014, 2010, 2008, before that. And you can't get away with trying to silence criticism about your work and about the lack thereof by trying to equate those people with trolls and vitriolic, hateful people. Can't do that because we're not going to let you. That doesn't mean you get away with stuff like this. That doesn't mean you are allowed to use that as a McCarthy-like smear. Because here's the thing. Those people who are looking at Activision Blizzard now, they have no idea what that word even means. They have no idea idea what that even is. And the details surrounding it are so confusing at this point, no one knows right from left there. There were legitimate concerns, legitimate claims about lack of transparency and nepotism and stuff like that that was going on well before that even became a thing and well after that became a thing. You can't get away with shoddy journalism by using that as a McCarthy-like smear. You can't do it. That's not fair to those people who have a legitimate claim, who have legitimate concerns, and you should address those concerns in a way that takes it seriously. And we've said that countless times. People who have no idea what that word even means, people who have no idea what that even was, are still criticizing you for this action and actions like this. And yet, this is the only recourse you have? Is to use that as a smear? As a smear tactic? Sort of like what TYT is doing to Julian Assange and Jimmy Dore and Aaron Mate, that is the type of smear you're doing here. Those people who are seeing your tweets and are calling you out have no idea what that is. Full stop, they have no idea what that even is. But more to the point, you're now blocking people on Twitter. Again, you go through this every single time you get called out on anything. You're trying to have your cake and eat it too here and you're hiding replies to your messages. How is this not suspicious? How is this not showing that you have something else that you're not telling us. 
who are these people who you're talking to? Because it does seem like though you're trying to get your hands into the DFEH investigation as well. This email that you're showing that is proof is actually showing that you have to be investigated now, right now. Because I feel as though maybe you have some information that you still are not sharing to the DFEH that Activision Blizzard was telling you. That you are not this innocent journalist bystander here that found this out, but you are actively hiding something. That you are doing something for them. And that there is still more information that you know, but you don't want to share to us. That you are an accessory to these incidents going forth. There was a woman who took her own damn life because she was getting harassed and abused. Would an early exposure about what was going going on here, which by the way, journalists do all the damn time on other networks, NBC, CBS, ABC, Fox, they go through this all the time before an investigation even takes place. It's sometimes because of them that an investigation starts. So don't give me that anyway, because it might be because you found something out that you go to the DFEH. Did you ever go to that? Did you ever see anything happen well before the DFEH even started their investigation and you didn't say anything or you didn't investigate or you didn't report on something that you might have seen because the DFEH investigation might have happened a lot sooner had you said something. So in light of that, maybe you have absolutely no excuse for not reporting on this because maybe if you reported on this, that woman might still be alive today. She might have survived the vitriol and the harassment and the abuse. And I'm not saying you're responsible, but you could have done something in order to prevent this stuff from happening. I'm trying to give you the weight of how negligence in reporting on this, if you knew something about it, and yes, we might be guilty too in not focusing on stuff like this a little bit sooner, but here we are right now. All we have to do is make sure that something like this never happens again, at least through the best of our ability and at least on our watches, but you had a chance to do something, you never did it. And now we're left wondering, what else do you know? What else are you trying to keep from us to make sure that your corporate backers or your advertisers stay happy? Because here's the thing, they're looking to settle maybe? Maybe this looks so bad that maybe they want this to go away? But here's the other thing I'm wondering. What if this is not just a civil suit? What if what you know could turn out to be something of a criminal suit? Like somebody could go to jail for something they did here. I'm not claiming that he's absolutely hiding anything that might be of that regard, but seeing him go through all of this and seeing him go through the blocking spree on Twitter and using Twitter's tools in order to shield himself from criticism when these criticisms are valid and should be answered for and from people who, again, have no idea about the smear that he leveled on these people who are calling them out. Something that, by the way, no other game journalist right now is actively doing when they're reporting on this. Kotaku is not getting this kind of pushback. Neither is IGN, and they're far from the most reliable news sources that we have. This is the guy that's trying to hide his replies, hide things that would call him out or expose him, block people on Twitter all over the place. He's not just sitting on the story. There's more to it that he's probably not saying here because he had the inside track. He had all of this inside track. What what else does he know that he's not saying? And would that further this case from a civil to a criminal investigation? Journalists are the reasons, should be the reasons why the investigation takes place. No, I don't buy for a single second that Jason Schreider was acting in good faith here. I don't believe it for a second. He was protecting Activision Blizzard. He got caught doing it and now he's trying to explain himself out of it while still protecting them from something else. I have to think that he maybe just maybe, I'm just saying it because I want it to be out there, people to digest that maybe he has something else that he's still not saying. And these people, the people who work at this company, who have nowhere else to go, who need the job to feed their families and put food on the table and roofs over their heads, who should be unionized that way if they wanted to participate in that walkout, which was become a little more than a PR stunt by those people who 
who had other places to go who didn't actually care about those people who couldn't get up from their jobs in order to participate in that. The people who are really suffering here. If you really wanted to help these people, you should actively try to help form a union of video game developers so their rights are protected so they don't have to go through the same thing. But maybe you don't want to have that because if that were to happen, not only would that take place, but actual video game journalists, the ones that want to do this job, the people who actually care about video games, who actually have done this all their lives, who have played video games all their lives, who care about this thing and won't take it as some kind of joke to them, if they start unionizing, then people like Jason Schreier and those who take money from these corporate Neanderthals will be done. They don't want that. So this is their silencing tactic. They're going to do this. They're going to keep doing this unless people stop falling for it like they are now. Some of the people are falling for this. Again, don't let them do it. Hold his feet to the fire. No, don't harass him. Don't send him a troll messages. But we need to make sure that our voices are heard. We need to make sure that these people who who were suffering the most like the 900 people that I heard got laid off maybe prematurely while well, these people these Neanderthals at Activision Blizzard were allowed to harass and abuse these workers who don't have anywhere else to go have no protection who were shouting from the rooftops for actual video game journalists to help them out while we were so distracted about a poster in a video game or God forbid Scott Carthorn uses his money to donate to political campaigns maybe if we use our resources that we use for that to stuff like Activision Blizzard and Ubisoft, perhaps this would not be the problem it is right now. Stop with distractions, stop with these smears, and just do your damn job. That's what we're trying to get you to do. And maybe if we would just answer the questions in the way that you take them seriously, people would stop asking the questions. Maybe thought of that. Instead of blocking people and trying to form your own little bubble, maybe just answer the questions in a honest manner. If you want things to get to stop, maybe Maybe you just answer the damn questions because you blocking people are not going to get it to go away. And for God's sakes, if you know anything else, Jason, just say it. Tell us what's really going on and stop protecting the people who are giving you money because we know right now what this is all about. Because other journalists were trying to get to the bottom of this. People were trying to figure out what was all going on and they got blacklisted. Why didn't you not? One has to wonder why and I hope we get the answer to that. My name's JJ Shadow. That just happened. Oh, 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 oh